Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the meditation. So we will start by <clears throat> generating bodhicitta motivation for this session. So we can remember since beginningless time, we have been trapped in the prison of the mind, in the prison of cyclic existence, samsara. We have no control over our experiences. Everything we experience is due to our karma and afflictions. Try to generate a great sense, a wish. May I be free from suffering and its causes. May I be free from the bondage of karma by eliminating all my mental afflictions. And you can contemplate that just like me, all sentient beings are in the same boat. Due to karma and afflictions, constantly being reborn in different states. Sometimes as a human, sometimes as an animal, hungry ghost, hell being, sura, azura being, without a choice. Constantly going through different types of suffering experiences. Try to think that <clears throat> If only they were to meet with the teachings, listen to them, reflect upon them, and meditate in order to put an end to the afflictions and see reality as it is. May they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and its causes. I myself will take responsibility <clears throat> I have this <clears throat> precious human rebirth. I am born human, I have all these leisures and freedoms, endowments. I'm taking responsibility. I will study, reflect and meditate. I will free my mind from all obscurations in order to become a Buddha, to guide all sentient beings, to benefit them to free them from the misery they have been experiencing since countless rebirths. May I become a Buddha to benefit all my dear mother sentient beings. So with this motivation in mind, we will do this session today. <clears throat> we will start with five minutes of 
single pointed meditation, shamatha. I don't think I need to repeat all the instructions. I will just remind you of the main points. The first one is the posture. You can adjust your posture. Remember the seven points Varachana posture. The second point is the object of meditation. So we are taking a mental object. You can choose the one you are familiar with for doing single pointed meditation. If you don't have an object, you can visualize a tiny drop of white light between your nose and your upper lip. And place all your focus, all your attention on that tiny drop dot of white light. Very small, maybe one or two milli, milli, millimeters in diameter. <laughs> And your mind can also be multitasking. You can also count your breaths, your cycles of, of breathing. And <clears throat> be aware of the errors that can arise during meditation. How the mind can very easily become distracted by excitement and laxity or dullness and finally make sure you use the remedies introspection and mindfulness so introspection constantly throughout the five minutes of meditation your mind should be checking a part of your mind should be checking Am I meditating? Am I concentrated on my object? If not, as soon as I notice that I am not concentrated, immediately I bring back the mind to my object with mindfulness. And I make sure that I don't forget my object. I stay concentrated on it fully. So we will do this for about five minutes.
gently come out of the meditation. So today we will be meditating on impermanence and death. And as usual, in order to prepare our minds, we will be meditating on the seven branches of practice, the seven limb prayer, to accumulate merit and purify our minds in order to create the causes to the supportive conditions to achieve realizations of the Lamrim. So we can remember our bodhicitta motivation from the beginning. Remember our suffering, the suffering of sentient beings our wish for them to be free from that suffering, our taking responsibility to free them, and how can we free them? By getting rid of all our obscurations and becoming a Buddha to be able to guide them perfectly. So we can visualize in front of us Shakyamuni Buddha, In front of him, you can visualize your gurus, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. On the left and right hand side of Shakyamuni Buddha are seated Arya Manjushri, the Buddha of Wisdom, and Arya Maitreya. who gave the teachings on compassion. You can visualize <clears throat> all the Buddhas of the past, all the Buddhas of the present. You can visualize the Nalanda masters. Try to imagine as many Buddhas as you can in front of you. And surrounding you are all sentient beings. We are guiding them into these prayers. So you can start with your father on the right and your mother on the left. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Sangi chodan zogi chonam la jonju vado dagne kyatsuichi dagi jin zogi pe zognam ki jola benju sangi ju barai ju sangi chodan zogi chonam la jonju vado dagne kyatsuichi dagi jin zogi pe zognam ki jola benju sangi ju barai ju. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from attachment for friends and hatred for enemies. Reverently I prostrate with my body, speech and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I declare all my negative actions accumulated since beginning last time.
and rejoice in the merit of all holy and ordinary beings. So for rejoicing, we will stop a little bit longer, as advised by the late Kyabje Lama Suparimpoche. It's a very easy and quick way to accumulate a lot of merit by rejoicing in all the deeds of the holy beings and ordinary beings like myself, what we are, the good virtuous activities we are doing. So we can think of all the deeds of Shakyamuni Buddha. All the holy actions of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And all our virtuous friends. We can rejoice in the merit that all the Sangha members are constantly accumulating by living in the vows. That they are also studying, contemplating, meditating on the teachings. They are offering service in Dharma centers, doing retreats. We can rejoice in the activities of all Dharma practitioners, including ourselves. And then we continue. Please remain until the end of cyclic existence. and turn the wheel of Dharma for living beings. I dedicate my own merits and those of all others to the great enlightenment and to accumulate even more merit, we'll do a short mandala offering. This crown anointed with perfume, strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, four continents, the sun and the moon, I imagine this as a Buddha field and offer it. May all living beings enjoy this pure land. Kidam Guru Ratna Mandala Kam Niryatayami. And then we will read the uh, Foundation of All Good Qualities, which is a short Lamrim prayer composed by Jerim Purchila Matsunkapa, that contains all the essential points of the Lamrim. So we will read all these points and request blessings to be able to realize them quickly, very quickly. The foundation of all good qualities is the kind and perfect pure Guru. Correct devotion to him is the root of the path. By clearly seeing this and applying great effort, please bless me to rely upon him with great respect. Understanding that the precious freedom of this rebirth is found only once, is greatly meaningful and is difficult to find again, Please bless me to generate the mind that unceasingly, day and night, takes its essence. This life is as impermanent as a water bubble. Remember how quickly it decays and death comes. After death, just like a shadow follows the body, the results of black and white karma follow. Finding firm and definite conviction in this, please bless me always to be careful, to abandon even the slightest negativities and accomplish all virtuous deeds. Seeking samsaric pleasures is the door to all suffering. They are uncertain and cannot be relied upon. Recognizing these shortcomings, please bless me to generate a strong wish for the bliss of liberation. Led by this pure thought, mindfulness, alertness, and great caution arise. The root of the teachings is keeping the Pratimoksha vows. Please bless me to accomplish this essential practice. Just as I have fallen into the sea of samsara, so I have all modern migratory beings. Please bless me to see this, train in supreme bodhicitta, and bear the responsibility of freeing migratory beings. Even if I develop only bodhicitta, but I don't practice the three types of morality, I will not achieve enlightenment. With my clear recognition of this, please bless me to practice the bodhisattva vows with great energy. Once I have pacified distractions to wrong objects and correctly analyzed the meaning of reality, 
This lets me to generate quickly within my mindstream the unified path of calm abiding and special insight. Having become a pure vessel by training in the general path, this lets me to enter the holy gateway of the fortunate ones, the supreme Vajra vehicle. At that time, the basis of accomplishing the two attainments is keeping pure vows in Samaya. As I have become firmly convinced of this, this lets me to protect these vows and pledges like my life. Then, having realized the importance of the two stages, the essence of the Vajrayana, by practicing with great energy, never giving up the four sessions, please bless me to realize the teachings of the Holy Guru. Like that, may the Gurus who show the noble path and the spiritual friends who practice it have long lives. Please bless me to pacify completely all outer and inner hindrances. In all my lives, never separated from perfect Gurus, may I enjoy the magnificent Dharma. By completing the qualities of the stages and paths, may I quickly attain the state of Vajratara. So the last two weeks we have been meditating on the first two points of the Lamrim, Guru Devotion. And last week we have looked at the precious human rebirth with its eight freedoms, ten endowments, and how rare and precious it is. So Kabiyaji has been teaching also on those points you can watch the recordings on our youtube channel and uh, this week we will start exploring impermanence and death so this morning we'll look at the disadvantages of not being mindful of death and the benefits of being mindful of death And then on Wednesday, we will do the nine point death meditation. So we can contemplate that if we are not mindful of our upcoming death, then we will not remember the Dharma. If we don't remember that we will pass away eventually, can happen at any time in any place, then our minds will constantly be distracted with worldly activities, we will not remember the Dharma. And if you are not mindful of our death even if we remember the dharma oh, sorry yeah if we even if we don't remember the dharma then we will not practice it too busy too distracted too caught up in worldly activities <coughs> or we will be lazy not seeing the urgency of practicing the Dharma. And if we don't remember our death, if we are not mindful that we might die at any time, even if we remember the Dharma, even if we practice it, we will not practice it purely because our practice will be mixed with the eight worldly concerns, the eight worldly dharmas, meaning that we will be concerned with the, the pleasure of this life, our reputation in this life,
As Lama Zuparimpusha used to say, practicing the Dharma means thinking beyond this life, preparing for what is coming after death. If we don't remember, if you're not mindful that we can die at any time, then our practice will also not be persistent. If you are not mindful that we can die at any time, we will create many unwise, negative actions. And finally, at the time of death, we will have many regrets. If we don't remember, if we are not mindful that we might die at any time, we will not engage in Dharma, pure Dharma practice. We will be too busy with the concerns of this life. We will create negativities to achieve temporary pleasures. That are actually in the nature of suffering. These pleasures are suffering of change. They are trapping us in samsara. So when we die, we regret not practicing the Dharma, engaging in non-virtue, On the other hand, <clears throat> in our daily lives, if we are mindful that we can die at any moment, our actions will become very beneficial. Our spiritual practice will become very powerful. Being mindful of death, Lama Tsongkhapa says, it is important at the beginning of our practice. It is important in the middle of our practice. And it is important at the end of our practice. If we are mindful of our upcoming death, then when we pass away, our mind will be very peaceful, happy, free of regrets. So take a minute to contemplate why it is so important to be mindful that we might die at any time.
So being aware that we might die even before this session finishes and remembering our bodhicitta motivation, we will dedicate the merits that we have accumulated by contemplating the lamb rim. I think we're on page 36 or something like that. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. So we can also pray for the long and healthy life of all our lamas. May they continue to teach us until we are all awakened. We can also pray for the swift return of our lamas who recently took the aspect of passing away. And we can dedicate the merits that we have accumulated in this session so that there might be no wars, no famines, no epidemics, no crawling, no fighting. May peace and harmony prevail. You can also pray to always meet with qualified Mahayana virtuous friends in all our future lives, to never be separated from the Dharma, the teachings of the Buddha. And thank you very much, everyone, and have a beautiful day, a beautiful week. Bye-bye.